Hello, this is Anthony Arroyo from the AbletonCookbook.com. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit, we're going to continue talking about audio interfaces, um, following on uh, the two posts that I wrote earlier this week um, on Monday and Wednesday. <clears throat> and right now, I'm going to show you two um, of the co most common questions that I get about how to set up an audio interface um, with Ableton Live. So this one is going to be kind of... Uh, Kind of on the boring side, I think, but it's super, uh, it's information that I definitely uh, hope, wish that someone had told me when I was setting this up to begin with. So the first question that I got was, um, so the two questions are this. The first question is, how do I set it up so that I can record uh, multiple tracks from multiple inputs onto different tracks? So there's like, if you would like to make a, uh, let's say like a multi-track recording of a band or something like that, you don't want all of the... Um, you don't want all of the instruments going to the same track. So um, first, why don't we go ahead and show you how it's set up to begin with. So go ahead and press I.O. here, and this will open up the I.O. Uh, pane um, at the bottom of these tracks. Alternatively, you can always do um, Alt-Command-I to toggle that open and close. So you'll notice like for this audio track, the audio from here is going to be from external in. And then the sub menu is going to have these drop down things. So right now it's just inputs one and two um, together, meaning it's a stereo track, or one or two separately. So right now it's not totally activated because right now I'm using um, a Motu Ultralight, which has, I believe, something like 10, 14 inputs, something ridiculous. I've never used them all. So, um, so I'm going to show you how to activate those right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the settings, which is uh, preferences rather, not settings. Preferences. Once again, you can also do command comma, which is what I normally do. And then choose as your audio input device whatever you'd like to use. I did the Motu Ultralight. Remember that if it's not showing up here, you want to want to check the connection, either the USB cable or the um, or maybe like the uh, the uh, power might not be on something like that. Okay, so make sure that it shows up here. Make sure that you have it connected for both audio input and audio output device. And then, and this is, by the way, this is in the audio pane of the preferences. Um, and then you're gonna press input configuration. You'll notice here that you get taken to basically a list of all the different, of all the different uh, stereo pairs that your interface has. Uh, you can see mine has seven, so it has 14 in, in your, uh, inputs altogether. That's really high, so you might not see all these, so don't worry if you don't have as many. And then you can go ahead and just activate, putting in yellow, um, the ones that you want to use. And you might ask, why don't they just have these activated automatically? And the reason it says right up here is that the um, having these inputs available actually uh, takes up CPU. So it's not like the kind of thing where you'd, you'd want to have all these available all the time because, frankly, you're not going to use them all the time. So go ahead and press OK, and you could do the same thing with outputs. So right now, just the, the main outs are being used, but I'm going to go ahead and activate these three and four ones for a reason I'll say in a couple of minutes. So um, actually, let's just, just for giggles, let's do that. OK, press OK. And we're going to just close this. We actually don't have to save anything. So now you'll notice that you can um, open this I.O. again and now at this drop down menu instead of just having one and two you have one, two, three, four, five, six and then all the mono versions of those tracks as well. So you can pick either a stereo pair or you can pick um, just one of those mono inputs right there. So this is going to be slightly different, like I said, depending on how um, your interface is set up. But this is how you would go ahead and set this up for multi-track recording. So let's just make a couple of new tracks. And all I did was um, press uh, Command-T to make those. And let's just say this one, for the sake of argument, would be drums. And this one would be bass. And this one would be something, chords. And this one would be box, let's say. And then what you could do is just once again open that pane, pressing Command Alt I from this drop down menu. Pick one, two for your drums, three, four for your bass. Actually, you know what? 
let's do mono because that way we could use regular mics. So you can see doing it this way, you could really have um, you could really have a different mic for every every track. And if you would, were to arm them all at the same time. then you could record them all simultaneously. So the whole band could play and you could just multi-track record that way. So, and this is just a reminder here, if you're, um, sometimes people have their settings so that the record arm is exclusive, meaning you can only have one um, track recorded at a time. What you can do to override that is just press command while you click. So press command and then click, and then you'll be able to arm them several, uh, several tracks at a time. Okay, so that is one question. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. The other question that I get a lot is about queuing. So, um, so the queuing, what what queuing necessitates basically is is you have to have two separate outputs. One going to the main um, main outs, usually like to the house or to the monitors, depending on what you're doing. Um, and also one that's going just to your headphones. Um, so if you're DJing, it's so that you can tra check the levels and the position of a track. And if you are um, playing live, you might just want to have the click coming out. So what you're going to do is remember what we did in the preferences here. So once again, command, comma, output configuration. This is why you're going to have multiple outs. Because you might want to have, let's say, the master coming out on the one and two, uh, outputs one and two, and then the Q being out on three and four. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go over here to master out, and this is going to be your main out, and then Q is going to be whichever um, outputs you'd like to use there. And um, what something that's really important to, to know also is that, is that, uh, you can, the click actually comes out on the cue track. So let's say you're playing with a band and you want just the drummer to have the, the click track. Well, what you could do is you could basically just root, you know, um, the cue out. So let's say you're not DJing or anything. You just want the drummer to have a click track. You could basically just root the cue to, let's say, three or something like that. And if you, like, just watch this. Like, I, don't, I don't have the... the um, the audio interface set up right now, but if you watch um, this little meter right here, you'll see it go up and down when I when I have the metronome on. So even if I stop that clip, you can see that this is still going up and down with the click. So that's a way that you can route the click to um, to a drummer or to yourself if you're doing live looping or something like that, and that will be totally uh, inaudible to your audience. And alternatively, if you're really, really on the budget right there, you can actually, what you can do is you could just mono your master track, right? Instead of having a stereo out, you can have a mono out. So it's just coming out on channel two and the click is just coming out on channel one, for example. I wouldn't advise that because that really uh, sort of shackles what you can do with your performance, but you could definitely do that if that's totally necessary. Um, that is all. All I have to say about setting up audio interfaces, um, oh, one more thing that you can do is, uh, is, is let's say you're, you want to cue, uh, you want to cue uh, track, and you so you don't want it to go to the, the master out. So what you can do is before you start playing, you activate this so it's cue instead of solo. So this is actually a toggle button that's going to change the status of these little buttons right here. So. Right now it's solo, so pressing this button will solo those tracks. What you can also do is switch it to cue, and then it's gonna cue those tracks. So instead of going to the master, in this case, if you press this button, this you can check this track in your own headphones, and it won't go out to the master um, track, which is really useful. Like I said, if you're DJing, you need to check the levels or something. All right. So anyway, um, if you have any questions regarding audio interface setup, go ahead and uh, leave me a comment on this post, or you can always hit me up Twitter. Okay. Uh, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.